Well, guys, this is very significant. We are now seeing the jet stream crossing the equator, and this is absolutely unprecedented. They have never seen the jet stream crossing the equator from the northern hemisphere into the southern hemisphere or from the southern hemisphere into the northern hemisphere. Normally, there is a separation between these jet streams at the equator. And so they are now saying that we can expect this to impact our seasons and also we're going to experience more fluctuations in temperatures as well as more catastrophic weather events. Now, this is exactly what the ancients left us information about in what we could expect as we move towards the end of an age. We have a warning from Padre, Padre Pio, a Roman Catholic priest, who said that you will know when that time is approaching because the seasons will change. So the only way you will know the seasons is by the leaves on the trees. So basically he was warning that the seasons would become confused. Then we have Johannes Friedi. He went into great detail to explain what we could expect as we move towards the end of the age. And he went on to say that when the great time will come in which mankind will face its last hard trial, it will be foreshadowed by striking changes in nature. The alteration between hot and cold will become more intensive. Storms will have more catastrophic effects. Earthquakes will destroy greater regions and the seas will overflow many lowlands. Now, I have the full prophecy that Johannes relayed to us with the warnings of what we can expect and I will link that in the comments underneath this video and you can watch that for yourself because he goes into great detail to explain to us how all of this is connected to Orion and the great event of the firmament and we can expect to experience this on all three planes and that is the mental, the physical and the spiritual. So I will leave a link to this video in the comments underneath and you can check that out for yourself. Now we see that the Hopi also left information warning us what we could expect as we move towards the end of this age. And that was that there would be earthquakes and floods causing great disasters, changes in the seasons and in the weather, disappearance of wildlife and famine in different forms. Again, we are seeing all of these events take place. Now, the Norse also left a very detailed prophecy of what they called the Ragnarok and basically this is the Norse version of the apocalypse where we see great changes upon our planet that brings in the dropping of the veil and the last final battle between good and evil. Now they speak of three brutal winters well, with no real seasons between them and then the sun will weaken and then the great thimble winter arrives. Part of their prophecy also goes on to say, it sates itself on the lifeblood of fated man, paints red the power's homes with crimson gore, black become the sun's beams in the summers that follow, weathers all treacherous. Do you still seek to know and what? Brothers will fight and kill each other, Sisters, children will defile kinship. It is harsh in the world, whoredom rife. The, an axe age, a sword age, shields are riven, a wind age, a wolf age. Before the world goes headlong, no man will have mercy on another. So basically, again, we are seeing this play out with wars all around our planet. We are seeing that people lack morals and integrity, that really it's all about materialism and dog eat dog to succeed. And so we have seen that the ancients were warning us of all of these events so that we would know and we could prepare ourselves 
for what is approaching. Now, what is interesting in the Norse prophecy is that they mention three brutal winters. Now, in 2014, I actually saw the first real evidence that we were moving into a change within our full global climate shifting and we saw the first polar vortex basically create a very brutal winter throughout the US. We even saw Niagara Falls freeze. Now it's not the first time Niagara Falls has frozen but we need to understand that you have to look at all of these events together. And we are seeing an escalation of earthquakes, volcanoes, and all of these temperature fluctuations happening at the same time. We may have seen the Niagara Falls freeze 100 years ago, but were we seeing an increase in everything else that we're also seeing around the planet? This is why we have to pay attention to all of the different aspects and bring them together into the full picture because... It's easy to say, oh, it's a one in a thousand year flood, it's a one in a hundred year flood, or this happened in 1970, or this happened 20 years ago. This is how they deflect from the truth, and they have us moving into a sense of complacency because we think, well, it happened 20 years ago, it's just normal, it's happened before. What we have to do is look at all of these events and how they're happening together. Now, what was so interesting also about this polar vortex? which began at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014, was when we saw this first polar vortex basically descend upon America in the way that it did and create very brutal winter conditions. Just before this happened, we saw the sun officially reverse its polarity for the first time. Now, after this, the poles actually moved back and we have seen the poles flip various times. They have moved quite a lot now because we've had a very different solar cycle with solar cycle 24. But on the same day that we saw these poles reverse polarity, we also saw a gamma ray burst from Orion. Now because I know everything is connected, I knew this was significant. And so when I saw the polar vortex, basically then start to create this brutal winter, I knew that we were seeing a big shift and that we could expect to see more of these shifts in our weather and that this was really going to start escalating. Now, a lot of people said to me when I saw this magnetic reversal as well as the Orion gamma ray burst, oh, why do you think that this is connected? I can't understand why you think this is connected. Well, that's because I study hermetics and I know that everything is connected because that is what hermetics teaches us with the principle of correspondence, that all of these events are connected. So when you're seeing the sun's poles flip for the first time during that solar cycle, as well as a gamma ray burst from Orion, and we know how important Orion is to everything, then we can pretty much understand that this is something significant that we do need to pay attention to. Well, subsequently, we have seen the polar vortex in 2015, and we've just had the polar vortex again in 2016, and it was very, very played down. But I have been keeping track of all of the cold events, including the records that have broken throughout winter that they do not report on mainstream TV. And so I would suggest you come to this website if you want to keep track of the cold events that are happening because they're not being reported on the Weather Channel, they're not being reported on the mainstream news, and if they do report, they use words like mild temperatures. They don't say cold temperatures, they try not to use that word cold because they're trying to push the fallacy of global warming. And this is absolutely incorrect because we can see that this 
unprecedented Arctic warming that they're claiming is actually false when you look at the data. Now, the scientist in this video that is explaining the unprecedented jet stream behavior and how it's crossing the equator, he goes on to try and push this towards global warming. So you just need to understand that there is no evidence that there has been global warming. It's just they fudge the numbers using averages. We are seeing temperature fluctuations in both the hot and cold extremes. But we are now starting to move towards a colder climate. And basically, when you look at information like this, you can see that it shows that the Arctic was actually warmer in the late 1930s than it is now. So I'll leave this link underneath and you can check this out more. Now, it's also showing that in the last few weeks, we have seen a sharp drop in global temperatures. This is because we're now transitioning from a La Nina to uh, La Nina. Now, an El Nino is where the temperatures of the oceans at the equator are warming. There's an anomaly and it starts warming and this affects all of the jet streams and this is affecting all of our weather patterns. But what's happening is now this is transitioning into a La Nina, which means that the temperatures at the equator are now cooling. There's an anomaly where they are cooling down the temperatures at the equator. And this is now bringing in a sharp drop in global temperatures. Again, we're still going to see these fluctuations where we have these heat events in certain areas. And so what they do is they take one heat event and then they'll average it out over the month, which is how they can say that we've had a very warm month and we've had a record-breaking warm month, when actually it's only a couple of days where we've experienced high temperatures and then they're averaging them that out through the whole month or the whole year. When in actual fact, when you actually look at all of the information, you can see that we've had record cold temperatures as well as record heat temperatures happening in all areas. And so, again, I would recommend this site if you want to keep track of all of the cold events because it's updated daily and they bring every single event that's happening across the globe into one place. They correlate it here so that you can keep track of what the mainstream media are not reporting because they want the narrative that there is global warming and that mankind are to blame and therefore we have to pay more money and somehow this is going to fix the problems that we're now having across our planet due to our own behavior. When in actual fact, we aren't doing the planet any favors in the way we are treating her, but what is happening is way bigger than mankind. This is something that's happening on a larger level and we are basically at the mercy of these changes. So all we can do is prepare ourselves and as I've said, we prepare ourselves on all levels and that's physically, mentally, but especially spiritually because it matters. Everything is connected and if we really want to take a easier path through what's approaching, we need to be aware of what we are to expect and that is more severe weather, more fluctuations in the temperatures, more flooding, more earthquakes, and more volcanic activity. And so if you're living in an area where you do experience flooding, well, it's not going to stop. You're going to keep experiencing more of these flood events. And so what you need to do is basically have the courage to make changes and use this information and apply this information to your experience. If you're just looking at this information as though it's interesting, but you're not really applying this information to your experience here, then you're not going to make good decisions. And eventually you may find yourself in a position that is not going to be one that is very positive or very enjoyable. And so this is what you want to avoid. This is why we go and seek out knowledge so we can prepare for these times. Now, we're also seeing reports from the 
14th of June that the North Atlantic cooling suggests the climate is about to change over much of the Northern Hemisphere. So guys, really, this jet stream that they are now seeing change and move across the equator is just more evidence of what we can expect. It's just more confirmation that there are huge changes taking place and we can expect to see more of an escalation. It's not going to change. And so we really just need to continue to basically prepare ourselves. And as I said, all we can do is just prepare ourselves on all three levels, and that is physically, spiritually, and mentally. But most importantly, you really want to prepare yourself spiritually, and you really want to prepare yourself mentally, because when we are basically faced with very negative events, those are the two areas you want the most strength in your life, physically and spiritually. Well, guys, I will leave it here and uh, I will basically just put all the links underneath and then you can check that out for yourself. And oh, just before I go, I just want to show you that we've had a spotless sun. The sun is definitely weakening. Now, remember the Ragnarok said that we could expect the sun to weaken as well. And they're also saying that this has been evident when they have had mini ice ages. They have seen that the sun becomes... Uh, weakened and lacks sunspots and so we're now seeing this for seeing this for five days we haven't seen any sunspots five or six days now it did happen about two weeks ago we had a few days without sunspots but this is actually even longer than the last time that we had no sunspots and I haven't seen a lack of sunspots during the whole time I've been observing the sun over the last few years so this is also some changes that we're actually seeing on the sun. Now remember what the law of correspondence says that everything is connected. So this is something that's also significant and we should be paying attention to. All right, well I'll leave everything linked underneath the video and you can check that out for yourself. And as always, peace out.